Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And let's take a look at Cameron Maven. So Cameron Maven actually has... A, he's, I mean, he's having a disappointing season so far. Only hitting 198. He's due for 3.4 million on the books. He's actually a decent center fielder. If you think about it, he's 77 overall. I mean, that's, that's okay. I mean, he's got pretty good contact. His clutch is his highest attribute. His reaction is pretty good in the field. He's got decent speed. But he's just not hitting the ball well right now. So what the, the change I'm going to make right now, I'm going to put Garrett Cooper. I moved him up from AAA. Um, and he actually is at the MLB level in real life. But he does bring that power that we've been looking for. He's got 70 power versus right, 74 power versus left. So I'm actually going to put him in right field. And I'm actually going to put uh, Lewis Brinson in center. So we're going to see how that goes for now and we're just gonna give Cameron Maven a little bit of a breather because I don't know if it's just that he's fatigued or what but he's just not getting it done right now so Lewis Brinson is gonna man center uh, Garrett Cooper I'm actually gonna move let's move him up to the sixth spot uh, let's keep let's keep JT Real Muto where he is um, and then versus left I think he does hit better versus left so it looks like he hits slightly better versus left so actually let's move him up here now um, and then Scott Van Slyke, I'm actually, I actually have him batting versus left. He hits a little bit better versus left than D Derek Dietrich, because Dietrich is a left-handed hitter. So uh, I have him in there. I'm going to put Garrett Cooper at the 6-0 versus right, and I'll put him at the 6-0 versus left. So I think he's slightly better than Scott Van Slyke hitting versus left. Yeah, so let's keep him right there. Uh, let's just see how that goes for now. So, if you look at our schedule, I mean, we've lost six straight games. We got swept by the Dodgers, swept by the Colorado Rockies. So, we are at the end of April. One month has already passed. So, we got this three-game series with the Phillies. Let's just look at the standings to see uh, how everybody stacks up in this early part of the season in our division. So, the Nationals are 17-11, almost the opposite record of us. But, I mean, we're still, I mean, there's a lot of season left, but we can still turn this thing around. I know we're not expected to contend this year, but any year that you contend is a good year. So, um, looking at our batting average, we're only hitting 248, which is the second worst in our division. Let's look to see where we stack up around the league. I think we are in the middle of the pack last time I checked, so we're 20th, so we're below average uh i mean not terrible we're not at the absolute bottom but you know what's funny is that we're actually hitting better than the yankees right now so what are the yankees let's check out the yankees what exactly where are they in the al so then the al east so let's check out them so they're 13 and 16 three games under 500 and the red sox are above their division the indians are leading the al central right now astros no surprise there uh, let's look at the Pirates. The Pirates are leading the NL Central right now. What what happened to the Brewers? I mean, the Brewers were a team that were that was streaking when we started playing them, and then when we when we got it, went up against them, I guess they went on a slide. Let's look at the Brewers' schedule. Whoa! So ever since that, uh, ever since they beat us the first game of the series, and then lost that walk off. I mean, that home run versus Brinson. They've lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine straight. So I don't know what happened to them, but they fell off. <laughs> Man, I mean, we must have uh, damaged their soul at that victory. But this week we are going up against the Phillies. And I think it's a three-game series. Yeah, it's a three-game series. Then we're going to Cincinnati. And then we're going up against the Cubs. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to play... Um, a couple games in this Philly series, a couple games in this uh, Cincinnati series. But let's hop into it. Uh, we did play the Cubs already, so I don't know if I'll play that series. But let's hop into this action, man. Let's get it. Submit your storylines, man. Make sure to... I, I want to keep this interesting. I want to read some of your guys' storylines. What what should happen in this 
just create something like kind of creative i want to see you guys can come up with it so let's hop into this action let's go so adam conley on the mound he is one and three but the one thing that is so bad is his whip it's one six seven he has an era above seven so he definitely gives up a lot of base runners so i'm gonna need probably need some offense in this game to kind of counter that pitching that we have on the mound and early on he's giving up to hit giving up a hit to cesar hernandez then carlos santana comes up hits one down the line and we remember we have cooper out in right field he gets it to starling castro and throws hernandez out at the plate so we save a run early on in this game and this game we're going up against vince velasquez and vince velasquez actually look at his whip 2.03 He's even worse up to this point. And so we're going to be trying to put some runs on the board on him since he gives up a lot of base runners too. So here is Starling Castro here in the third inning, hitting one to the right center gap, starting uh, the bottom of the third inning out. There's actually two outs in this inning with the triple. So now we got a guy in scoring position with Justin Bohr coming up, and he gets a nice pitch to hit, but he hits a grounder. To the second baseman, Hernandez, on that one. And they uh, get out of the inning with no damage done. But on to the fourth inning, Adam Conley giving up a hit over um, our team Prado's uh, head. And this time it's Hernandez once again. We cannot keep this guy off of the bases. So uh, here with uh, no outs in the inning. This time another hit up the middle. Brinson isn't going to uh, react well to that one. He probably had a chance at that one, but he took a step back before stepping up. So now uh, runners on first and second, a little dribbler back to Conley and he gets the force out at first. So now Cameron Rupp comes up with a guy on second and third. He's gonna get it inside pitch and hit this one deep to left field. That one's to the warning track, but it's gonna be caught by Derek Dietrich and they're gonna get on the board first in this game and take the one nothing lead. So JP Crawford comes up with two outs, a guy on second gets a pitch to hit and Brenton's playing pretty deep in the outfield. He comes up throwing, but the runner is going to be safe at home. So now the Phillies take the 2-0 lead. And here Rosales comes up next, and he gets a pitch to hit. And Adam Rosales hits one over the left field wall. And that one is going to be gone for a two-run homer. And that's going to be a four run lead here in the fourth inning and this is exactly what i was talking about we have to get the offense going because we know adam conley is definitely going to give up a lot of runs and maybe that's something we have to address our our middle of the rotation is kind of questionable we have despagne there we rotate harlan Gar garcia there and i mean it's just we don't know what's going on especially with urania i don't know he hasn't been healthy this season so far, and he hasn't been impressive in his starts. The only guy that's really been impressive has been Sandy Alcantara, and I don't know. I, I mean, we need to make some moves to bolster this rotation because right now we're, we're not doing so well. But here in the fourth inning, we do get a run in from JT Ramuto. He gets a sacrifice fly from Martin Prado. So now on to the bottom of the sixth inning here. Starling Cash is going to get on with the walk. Vince Velasquez still in the game up to this point. And here Justin Bohr is going to get a pitch right down the middle. He's going to groove that one to the right center gap. That's going to drop in. And Starling Cash is going to round third, head home, and he's going to slide in safe. So now this four-run uh, lead is going to be trimmed down to two. So now they bring in Luis Garcia here uh, to get him out of this jam. And JT Realmuto comes up. Hits a ground of the third base, holds up Justin Bohr. Justin Bohr's only got 20 speed, so he's not going anywhere on that one. So now Cooper comes up, and he misses there on the slider down in. And facing a 3-2 count with two outs, Martin Prado does get walked. So JT Riddle comes up with a chance to be the hero, but he grounds out to shortstop, and they are going to get out of this inning. So now... Uh, Ramos is going to come in late in this game now to the bottom of the eighth inning Justin Bohr is going to get a pitch to hit he's going to hit this one deep to left center and that one is going to be gone and that four run lead is now down to one run off the Justin Bohr home run and we've been looking for him to get going in this season and finally he's coming through the last couple games He's been kind of warming up because remember the first part of the season, he I think he struggled. I think he started the season out like two for 15, but now he's definitely turned it around. 
especially showing the power here. So now JT Remuto comes up next, and he's been doing okay as well, but the right fielder dies for this one and misses it. So JT Remuto already has an inside-the-park home run this year, gets held up at third base, so starts it out after Justin Bohr getting on third, and Martin Prado comes up next, who's actually having a really good string of games here with the sacrifice fly to right field and this is going to be a tie game here in the eighth inning and we're going to go on to extra innings but here is bear claw in to pitch here the 10th inning and he's going to give up a walk to start out the inning with one out but we're going to get a ground out to starling castro so two outs here at the top of the 10th inning jp crawford's going to hit one up the middle pass the glove of JT Riddle and Lewis Burns is going to come up throwing, but the runner is going to be safe at home. And this inning is still alive. The Phillies take the uh, one run lead. And here, Stecken Rider comes in to get us out of this inning, but he gives up a hit this time to center field. And that is going to be another run here for the Phillies in extra innings. And we just need to get out of this inning, but we do. We get. Uh, Herrera to pop out to center field so now we got to score two runs in this inning just to tie this game up and here's Pat Neshek coming into pitch and first facing Cooper and Cooper gets a hit to the right side over the second baseman's head Cesar Hernandez and that's going to be a nice start to this inning but Martin Prado comes up next hits a grounder to Franco and Franco is going to turn the double play 3-6-3 three, three, and that's going to be two outs with JT Riddle coming up and he's going to whiff at the circle change up on that one and that is going to be a loss for the Marlins in the first game of the series. We actually sim the second game and we get a win so it's 1-1 one, one going into this final game facing Aaron Nola this time and look at his whip. It's a 104 so we might have a little bit of difficulty getting hits in this game but here's JT Remuto in the second inning getting a walk and next up cooper is finally getting going with the hit to the right side and now we're going to have runners on the corners with martin prado coming up and he's going to hit one up the middle and drive in the run and this is what we've been missing runs early on in games so we take the one nothing lead and here is harlan Gonza garcia coming up to bat and he's pitching, but he gets a pitch to hit this time, helping himself out at the plate. And the runner is going to come into score, and that's going to be a 2 nothing lead here in the third game in the, in the series in the bottom of the second inning. So now on to the top of the fifth inning. This time Harlan Garcia is going to get into a little bit of trouble this time. Giving up the double here to Rosales, and he's going to round first, head to second. And it's going to be one out in the inning this time. So here's Vince Velasquez up to bat, and he's going to ground out to Justin Boer, but moving the runner over to third base. So here with two outs, Herrera is going to hit the uh, grounder to the right side, but Starlin Castro is going to be there for the put out and now we're going to be on to the bottom of the sixth inning with Justin Boer coming up to the plate and he's going to hit one deep once again to the same spot as last game and that one is going to be over the fence and he's been going opposite field a lot these last couple games and this one is going to be no different over the fence for the home run and this is a rare game for us i mean we're doing pretty good pitching haven't given up any runs and we're actually doing a pretty good job hitting behind the bat of justin boer and also martin prado our veterans are really showing up and speaking of martin prado here he comes back up to the plate with two outs and he's gonna get on once again and martin prado is actually showing me something i mean he's got some trade value because a veteran team might want him a team that's contending but i like what he's doing for us i think i actually might move him up to the two spot because he's doing pretty well and here he is once again in the bottom of the eighth inning and he's going to get another hit to the right side. So he's actually doing pretty well. I might keep him at the spot that he's in because I like that he can drive in runs. But my two spot, Derek Dietrich, is just not doing anything. Neither is JT Riddle, who's right behind him, a couple spots behind him. JT Riddle is actually pretty disappointing up to this point. 
I had Rojas there at shortstop, but JT Riddle's replacing him, but he's not doing any better. But here is Scott Van Slyke here to pinch hit for the pitcher, and he's getting a hit to the left center gap, and that's going to drive in a run. And Scott Van Slyke, he's actually had a couple games where he's got in and started. He's actually hitting over 300 up to this point. So we now we have Steckenrider in for the close, and... He's going to get the first batter to strike out, swing in, get the next batter to ground out to first base. So here with two outs, facing Carlos Santana, he's going to get him looking to end the game. So the Marlins take two out of three versus the Phillies. So we definitely need to beat up on uh, a divisional opponent. So we get two victories here. And one thing to note, I mean, Lewis Brinson went 0 for 5. He's kind of been slumping a little bit. He's still hitting over 250. But look at Derek Dietrich, only 1 for 4. I don't like what he's doing up to this point. But he's still at 250 as well. But look at uh, Martin Prado. I mean, he's doing pretty good hitting 300 on the year. Scott Van Slyke has hitting 300 as well. And, I mean, we just need some offensive production from some of these other guys that need to contribute, like JT Riddle. Uh, Garrett Cooper, we need to see what he can do. We don't really know what we're going to do with that third outfield posi position because I want to put Scott Van Slyke in, but he's just such a defensive liability. His arm strength is low. His fielding is low. But we take two out of three from the Phillies, so hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. We got a tough part of the schedule coming up, so you don't want to miss that, so let's go.